Hello, hello. Welcome back to Petty Daydreams. This is the 10th episode. Thank you guys for getting me this far. Thanks for sticking around for 10 weeks of, you know, app discussions, some advice, and, you know, your favorite hot takes. So, welcome back for your weekly dose of all those things and more. Guys, I got a huge outpouring of feedback about the last episode with Leslie talking about cosmetic injectables. You know, some of you are like, wow, you know, like you're connecting with her now. You are thinking about getting cosmetic injections. Maybe some of you are like, well, I think I'll still wait. Some of you are actually scheduling appointments to go see Leslie. So I am really could not have expected more from that episode, that discussion. Maybe we'll have Leslie on again to talk about something different. But thank you guys for treating my guests so well, for always treating my guests so well. And... I don't have a guest for today. It's just little old me. Sorry to disappoint. But we are going to be talking about a specific subject you may have never heard. It's like one of the internet's biggest, best kept secrets. And it is snark. So you may have guessed that from the title. But snark is basically several communities on the internet. And you've got like Reddit, which has blog snark. You've got Tumblr, you've got other forums, and essentially it is a place for anybody to offer their critique or their take on every little thing, an influencer, a blogger, writer, anybody with any kind of personal brand, to offer their critique on these people. So it's just really funny that, you know, in this era where we're supposed to be women supporting women, which has its own pitfalls, if you ask me, that we have communities like this that thrive and they're mostly made up of women. So like in particular, the blog snark subreddit has over 54,000 members. This is a large subset of the population. So if you maybe heard of snark, if you participate in these, uh, these communities yourself, or maybe you've never heard of it, we're going to get into kind of a deep dive on those. And of course, we're going to be offering advice to a listener. We're going to be doing a hot take. Uh, Just as an aside, thank you guys, everybody who participated in the giveaway. You guys blew me away by sharing it with your friends, commenting, following all these people. To the winner, I just want to say congratulations again. You know, I, every little thing that you guys do to support me, I notice it and I feel it deeply and I appreciate it. You know, we're going through such strange times Obviously, look outside, read the news. Some of it's for good, some of it's for worse. Sometimes I feel like the only sane person in the room. Well, not the same <laughs> in the room. I mean, I'm, I'm all alone. Well, with Peyton sometimes and Juno. But you get what I mean. Sometimes I feel like I'm one of the only sane people while the whole world is tumbling up, you know, tumbling into chaos around us. So it's been nice to have this kind of outlet to reach back out to you guys, discuss things with you, get feedback, and explore new topics with you every week. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. As always, thanks for leaving me reviews on Apple. If you haven't yet, please go on there and leave me a review. It helps with charts and all kinds of stuff. I'm kind of learning this as I go, but I think I couldn't do this without you, and it's true. So thanks for your continuous support. I hope you enjoy this episode. Let's get on to the discussion. Okay, guys, as promised, today's topic for the 10th episode is going to be talking about snark. Specifically, the name of this episode, unless I decide to change it after recording, is going to be dipping my toes into snark. So guys... I told you about this, okay? Snarking. This is what the specific name is that people came up with for these communities where they basically talk about bloggers, talk about instant Insta influencers, talk about people down to celebrities, people who are home chefs, etc. Like everything. 
So when you go onto the subreddit in particular, it's called Blog Snark, you can see as many as like 1,400 active members online at any given day. Out of the 56, okay, I got that number wrong earlier, 56,500 members. Let me just kind of give you like a snapshot of like what visiting this page looks like. So they'll always have like a pinned post that's influencer discussion and that's daily. And then they'll have like links for whatever else for basically the week. And then they'll have stuff like even like next door. They'll talk about specific influencers will be a big discussion. They'll talk about like who are your local regional influencers. And when you go into these, there's certain rules for this subreddit. Like you always have to say exactly who it is or what their handle is, like on Instagram or whatever. There's some other rules too. I don't really get into it. So like no spam, ex excessive speculation. So that's talking about like basically kind of making things into a conspiracy is the best way I can phrase that. So like if somebody's gone missing from, like if an influencer's husband is all of a sudden not in the picture, like if it's been months or whatever and like people are saying like he's dead, I think that would fall into the category of excessive speculation. And then the rules are not up for date, no, not up to, for debate. Um, some content is prohibited. Specify the influencer, like I said. No self-promotion. And then moderators can remove any posts, whatever, for any reason. But if you go into one of these things, you'll see... Let me just pull up an example. So you'll see something like a specific influencer. I'm not going to say their name. But you'll have people say... Side note, how can she be so damn chipper without carbs and sugar in her life? How, does anyone else notice how awkward she is in stories? How scripted they are? The long pauses. Uh, her house is so aggressively feminine? Question mark. She doesn't have to worry about cleaning it. Some people like this one today, okay? But then they have this one, like, they all remind me of the family off the movie Get Out. I don't know why, but just watching her makes me feel really uncomfortable. I'm so ready for this tackiness. She is just something else. All, at least my eyeballs are getting exercise from all the eye rolling I do when I watch her stories. Finally, this house is the epitome of McMansion hell. So this is talking about an influencer who has gone on. She's been on Kelly Clarkson's show. She's had her interior design and holiday decorating featured all kinds of places. So, like, she's a big-time influencer. Some would argue that leaves her open to criticism and stuff. But I can't help but think a lot of this stuff is just really fucking petty. Like, it comes across to me as, like, they're jealous because this woman is very well off. And this is just one specific influencer. Or, like, they just want, like, a space to, like, essentially be what you'd call, like, a mean girl. Other criticism, okay, like, when we had all of the... Black Lives Matter stuff first start, you know, in the black square and stuff. There was a lot of critique about those people who posted the black square and then never went back, talked about it again. Kind of like they ghosted the movement because they never really cared in the first place. So some of it is constructive. On a whole, a lot of the snark is just like really destructive. It doesn't serve a purpose. I guess it's an outlet for people to complain about things they don't have and stuff. Like, Meanwhile, these people aren't fucking creating anything that I know of. You can't do self-promotion, so I wouldn't know, but it's just day after day, okay? One specific influencer that I never really, like, followed, but there was an article that came out in The Cut published by her ex-best friend, and it talked about basically, like, the dissolution of their friendship, uh, Adderall usage, being left out, feeling like, you know, your friend... I don't know, like, being eclipsed by your friend, I guess is how I would put it. So that that kind of dynamic. And then she likes to say she went viral as a scam. So that is another influencer of note that is constantly talked about. She actually has her own subreddit dedicated to her. And so, yes, that is the same thing. It's a mix of constructive criticism and destructive criticism. But, like, you'll have people on there that post every single day multiple times. When I was like in the middle of this drama that happened, not her being canceled or whatever, but I was just like curious, like, so what's going to come of this friendship, all this stuff after that article was published. And I was checking her page every single day. I never posted on one of these snark threads or anything like that. 
But I was reading the one for this particular influencer every single day. You know, there was, like, conspiracy theories about what was going on. Like, was she paying for her apartment? Stuff like this. So I was like, I don't know. It was kind of like a mystery unfolding in real time. But, like, the most, <laughs> like, boring mystery you've ever heard of. It was just literally about somebody else. But, like, in some ways, it bordered on obsession. Like, every day I would, ch- like go to Instagram, check what she was doing first, look at her stories first, seeing what was happening. Because, like, my brain was just, like, consumed with this. I just wanted to know more. But, like, I would go and read these threads, and every once in a while I'd check into the snark thread for this particular person. And there you were, are, like, talking about the most random shit, like, Criticizing her hair, criticizing her, (laughs) I mean, honestly, her hygiene could use some work, but criticizing her hygiene, uh, criticizing her relationship with her mother, criticizing everything, like every single aspect of her. Yes, like I mentioned, there's a component of being in the public that opens you up to criticism, but I just feel like sometimes it's just going too far and that we're just compensating for inadequacies we feel inside ourselves. By tearing other people down. Even if you're not posting, if you're visiting this sub and like, if you think it's okay to overtly critique people in a public place where they they could go read it any day and it's over like trivial stuff related to them, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of bullying. I feel like that's kind of harassment. I mean, you could argue like they don't have to go there and read what they say, but like, If you were in their shoes, wouldn't you go read what people were saying about you? I don't know. It just, like, takes me back. Remember on MySpace, like, there was that thing you could add to your profile where people could, like, leave you anonymous messages? I got a few really shitty messages when I was in middle school. I think I was in, like, 7th or 8th grade, which, yeah, that was middle school. But, like, it reminded me of that. Like, when you can hide behind the internet or behind anonymity, people turn into, like, horrible monsters. I don't know. People want to act like snark is a form of commentary that is mostly productive. I just feel like that's a way to make themselves feel better about what they're doing. Like, if somebody, if they were in the same room as a person, I don't think they would say these things. I mean, when somebody is, you know, big time, they have all these followers and stuff, you kind of feel like they're invincible in some ways or like they're less human, but that's just not true. I think if anything, we could just practice more kindness and less judgment and stuff and reserve judgment, honestly, for the things that count. Like this same influencer that I've been talking about has her own subreddit. She said some pretty fucking racist stuff. It's not like overtly racist, but she's like... Almost trying to, like, I don't know what the hell she's thinking, but she'll, like, post different stuff, and it'll be, like, maybe, like, a caricature of, like, a hook nose on somebody. Uh, She posted, like, an Asian, it was, like, an Asian painting of some kind, like, eating out a bat or something like that. So she definitely posts stuff that's, like, extremely problematic, okay? Judge that stuff. Like, try and get people to push on that stuff. But don't hide in a snark thread. Like, make a fucking internet petition. People love to make internet petitions about, for example, Kylie Jenner being in the WAP video with Cardi, you know? So why not actually put pressure or put their feet to the fire about things that matter instead of just hiding in your internet hole? You are safe in your inaction and kind of hidden in your inaction, holding them to some kind of accountability publicly. Instead, you're just doing it on the internet. And then when they say things about your snark community, Mm -hmm. saying it hurts their feelings or whatever else, you make fun of them. So I just feel like it's not that productive. And I just feel like it's kind of just mean. And I feel like there's better courses of action we can take. Like, freaking report the person to Instagram for their shit being racist and problematic. Like, I definitely do that. Instagram hardly ever freaking does anything about it. But, like, that's more powerful than just fucking talking about it on a Reddit, subreddit, that nobody's ever going to visit that can do anything to change anything. So that's my two cents on snark. But it just can be, like, you can get wrapped up in this negativity sometimes. 
I think it's just important to step back as with anything and think about the other person on the end of the screen or on what you're saying. Like, everybody is a human. Maybe there's AI out there and stuff, but like, we've all seen her. Would you really be such an asshole to AI too? Like, you probably wouldn't. So why does that like somehow make what you're doing okay? So, I mean, if you're curious about these communities, on one end, you've got people who are complete fans and don't do anything to hold anybody in the public eye accountable. They just say everything they do is fine. That's an issue. On the other end, we have snark. And that's overly critical and overly just like petty and petty in a bad way, okay? Petty and mean and just not constructive. So you have these two sides, and I think we need to be somewhere in the middle. And if you see somebody being mean or cruel, like, say something. (laughs) It's, I mean, just be nice people. Be good people. People are going through so much shit right now that we don't even know. So, I don't know. If you're wanting to look into it, if you're like, what is this? It's just blog snark on Reddit. And they discuss literally everyone, everything. Maybe you'll find a niche there. But if you're going to participate, just think about the golden rule. Like I said, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Because you never know when you're going to be on the other end of the microscope and put under scrutiny like they are. So just be a little bit kind. Hold people accountable in ways that matter. And just be good, guys. Just be good. I think I've said that a few times, but I mean it. So next, we're going to go on to the advice segment. And I have some pretty good advice to give today to a listener. So I hope you will get something out of it too. All right, all right. So we're now on to the advice segment of Petty Daydreams. You guys know it. You guys love it. It's not always as exciting as the topic discussion or maybe hot takes where we talk about even like free boobing, but we do always get into the stuff that matters. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, I'm not a licensed therapist. I have a degree from the University of Oklahoma in letters. So if you want to talk about Plato or maybe you want to talk about the Odyssey, please don't reach out to me about the Odyssey. Like that kind of stuff. It's not related to this. I'm just giving advice as if you're my best friend sitting right across the table from me, leaning on me as a friend and needing some helpful words. So that's what I do every week. And I really appreciate that you guys trust me with your innermost problems and things that affect your day-to-day life. That's what I'm here for. So we're going to get into this one today. It was sent in to me on my anonymous Google form, which I suggest that you use, you know, like right after this episode, just think of something that you need advice on and go to my Instagram, click the link in bio, click the anonymous form and submit something to me. But this comes from the anonymous advice form today. And what do we have? Okay. It says, Dear Bobby, How do you handle saying no to friends going out to bars when you're worried about corona? Okay, so this is something I've been dealing with too. Um, You have people that are asking you to go out. They're asking you to go to bars. They're asking you to go grab dinner and stuff. Seemingly as if there's no pandemic going on. And you feel like an asshole. So... I really understand where you're coming from. Like, your friends are asking you. Maybe you've got some FOMO. Maybe you're like, oh, this summer sucks. Like, what could it hurt to just go out to dinner with these people for, like, 45 minutes? Whatever. But then you're like, will they be wearing a mask? Will I have to ask them to wear a mask? We can't really wear masks while we're eating. So it can be really difficult. It can make you feel bad. It can make your friends feel bad. Like, you actually don't want to see them. Most of the, um, you know, on a whole, people are like, okay, I understand. I get it. And maybe they're open to, like, doing activities. Like, we've been playing tennis. We've been having my grandma over. She sits on one chair, like, 15 feet away from me. 
and we just sit on the chairs. Um, nobody goes inside my house. So it's one of those things like you can find alternatives and people on a whole understand. But then I've had people where they don't really get it or they are like upset that you don't want to hang out with them. So maybe like the best solution is just like a simple etiquette solution. Like maybe it's just all about like an introverts. Okay, we are professionals at these because we have very limited energy for socializing. So we've perfected this idea of saying no without hurting other people's feelings. And then we still feel guilt guilt over it, but kind of going like this. So you'll be like, hey, thanks for inviting me out. I appreciate that you want to go have dinner or something like that, but maybe we could like picnic at Scissor Tail Park. Maybe we could go like for a hike and we could wear our masks. Maybe we could have, maybe we could grill out. Maybe we could go play tennis or disc golf, something like that. I'm really sorry I can't make it this t- make it at this time. You know, I'm just being careful with the pandemic. And that should solve it for most people. But maybe, like, you want advice, too, on how to deal with your own emotions about it. Because it really does suck. I feel like I'm being left out of a lot of stuff. I really wish I had actually socialized with people a lot more before this happened. Because I really suck about that. And my friends probably know that. But it's just like half the time I really don't feel like going anywhere. And I was kind of over bars anyway, but I don't know. You still feel bad. Like you feel like you're missing out. And at the same time, you like know you wouldn't be fun to be around or maybe be too worried. Like in the case of COVID, you'd be too worried about, you know, are they close enough to me? Are they too far from me? Can they hear me through my mask? Stuff like that. Which, none of those are excuses not to wear your mask around people, not in your household, okay? But it's like, how do you deal with, I don't know, maybe the loneliness of protecting yourself and protecting your immediate household by not going out with people and having dinner with people when they're not wearing masks? I mean, you've just got to like, I would say just, you know, like with anything, reach out to them first. You know, like, if you have to turn down this invitation, maybe you say, hey, I know I couldn't make it on Saturday, but how about you come over this week and we play badminton on my front lawn or play some can jam, or maybe we can play some video games or something like that. I mean, video games aren't the same as being face-to-face in person hanging out, but maybe just instead of, like, taking a, I don't know, more passive approach to being invited places, which I can definitely relate to. Like, maybe just take an active approach and, like, reach out to them every couple weeks or every week and say, hey, I have a suggestion for a plan, you know, like, some plans we can have that make you feel comfortable, okay? Because you need to feel comfortable about your level of exposure to other people so that you you can have a good time, too. And it can be done. I mean, like, if you guys are looking for advice on, like, maybe you have a friend that has anxiety and... OCD or whatever, but you want to reach out them out to them and hang out with them, reach out to me. Uh, I will tell you exactly how you should plan something with them that will make them feel comfortable. And I can't speak to everybody specifically on their OCD, but maybe I can help provide you with like some foundation for how they think or I don't know, how do I just make everybody feel comfortable? Because like that's the best thing that you can do in any kind of entertaining, hosting interaction. So That's the advice I have for you. Guys, do not forget to go to my anonymous advice form, okay? Ask me for advice on anything. Could be anything. Even like, guys, ask me how to set up a date or come up with travel plans. Like, I am way too good at that. And I would love to help you plan something special for somebody. I notice that Peyton and I are constantly, like, I don't know, we like to find things to celebrate during a time as difficult as this one. So if you want to come up with something like a fun weekend date, something like that, please reach out to me. I would really love to tell you how to do it. Um, If they listen to this podcast and you don't want me to tell you how to do it on the air, uh, just put that in your note or whatever. Or maybe email me, pettydaydreams at gmail.com. Just email me and I'd be happy to help you with whatever. Guys, I'm, I mean, I'm working seven days a week, but I would love to connect with you. I'm all, my DMs always open. 
So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. And let's get on to the hot takes. Welcome back to Hot Takes. Not the best voice, not the best execution, but I hope you understand. I have, I don't know, I don't know what I'd say. This is a historic hot take, um, straight from the Civil War, or, hmm, how can I make this funnier? I don't know. I give up. My brain is over this. Um, this is from the wonderful Facebook group from Georgetown, Texas. So I went to high school down in the Austin area, guys. I joined this Facebook group wondering like, oh, what's up with people there? Uh, I was so ready to leave Georgetown, don't get me wrong, but I was like, hmm, I wonder what's going on. (sighs) What a mistake some of that was. They are discussing removing a Confederate statue from the square of Georgetown. I think it's for the soldiers lost in the Civil War, something like that. But this is a comment on a post of one of the continuing discussions about this topic. So profile picture is a white, looks like a Dodge truck. His first name is Justin. So it says, since this statue is so hurting because it represents slavery in such a bad way, you could argue that cotton is even worse since the vast majority of slaves of all color, exclamation point, exclamation point, picked cotton. How many of you statue haters are wearing cotton right now? Be honest since you, in quotes, hate slavery so much. I'll wait. Uh, I was like so confused when I read this at first, like, Okay, so he's saying that the statue is hurting, and then he said, be honest, since you, in quotes, hate slavery so much, I'll wait. Um, I don't get how he's making this argument between a statue for a confederate, confederacy, I don't know, confederate soldier, and cotton. Uh, cotton's even worse Since the vast majority of slaves of all color picked cotton. How many of you statue haters are wearing cotton right now? So is he like trying to suggest that you're a hypocrite if you're wearing cotton right now? Um, I don't think any of us are wearing cotton that was picked and made by slaves from about 200 years ago. And also, like statue haters like I don't know like if you want to argue against tearing down statues I don't think you should pick this guy as a representative for the cause he doesn't even make much sense and like did he erect the statue himself is it for his like great great grandfather like no he just doesn't want this fucking statue taken down because he somehow has issues with like slavery or maybe he like still wants slaves i don't know his argument all over the fucking place and just another gem from another facebook group and it's of course located where i went to high school ah <sighs> so justin dodge truck picture i hope you find your way and maybe some ability to make an argument that is the hot take i have for today Maybe not as good as the free titties one, but I'll have another good one for you next week. I don't know. Guys, don't like, don't let people get you too riled up. I think we've well established that there are many, many, many very aggressive idiots. I was talking to the guy at Trader Joe's when I went to pick up some stuff today and he said, I, you know, I, every time I go to the grocery store, and you guys should do this too, you should ask your grocery store person how they're doing. They have been working this entire fucking time when masks weren't required, when they are now, as per the city of Oklahoma City, and they've dealt with every last freaking idiot. You know, like, not every encounter is filmed and put on the internet with these people. So... He, you know, I asked him and he said, well, you know, it's, it's okay. He said earlier I had somebody come in and 
You know, he was like, the idiots, you know, there's less of them now, but they sure are louder. So when you're going about your business and maybe you see somebody causing a ruckus at Trader Joe's or whatever, take pity on the fucking cashier and step in and say something or go get the manager or whatever. Because people now, for some reason, just think they're so entitled to act however they want. And even no matter how many times people are videoed and blasted on the internet, somehow they still think they're right. But like, don't let that get in the way of human decency. Ask your cashiers, all of your essential worker people, how they're doing. Maybe even just outside of the work or whatever. But like, connect with them as individuals. And this goes for people online to a certain degree too. But... As I've said, I think in a couple episodes, just be kind to people. I said be kind earlier in this episode during the topic discussion. And just consider that everybody is going through a fucking lot right now. And you can make a big difference in just one person's day by being decent to them and being kind, asking what's going on, asking how they feel. And I suggest you do it. So that's all I have for you. I think this is going to be a slightly shorter episode. I'm going to have a couple guests coming up in the next few weeks. So I hope you guys are excited for that. Um, Leave me a positive review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Share this when you're listening to it, to your story and tag me. I appreciate every little piece, every little crumb you throw my way. Some crumbs are bigger than others. I'm not saying your support is crumbs. Uh, Or crummy. Ah, pun. But I don't know. Have a great weekend, guys. Give me some feedback. I probably got the dates wrong on, I think I said 200 years ago in the Civil War. I wonder if that is exactly right. So it's actually been 159 years. So not even 200 years and people want to act like this shit (laughs) is just like slavery's gone, racism's gone, blah. No, guys, you motherfuckers, it didn't happen all that long ago. So I'm sorry if I got the exact date wrong. I think that's it. I think that's all I have for you guys. So tune in next week. Thanks for listening. Stay petty. Have a good one.